Okay, we're on for accelerated math factoring trinomials. Uh, tri, of course, you know as triangle, tricycle, uh, has three, so it's three terms. So there we go, one, two, three terms. We're looking at trinomials that we're going to factor. And if you know factoring, uh, factoring 24, you might factor down to 2 times 12 or 4 times 6 and might keep going with it. But what it is is it's things that multiply to give the original number. All right, so we're looking for something that multiplies two terms that multiply to give this uh, trinomial. And uh, we're going to look for, they're going to be in the form of binomials, uh, two terms in each. And so that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we're going to use a tool. Let's see, let me clear that out and pull in some notes for this. Uh, these are some notes from a class that I did. And uh, they've got this example here, but we're going to use this one up here. And the first thing it says is GCF. Um, we're going to question whether there's a greatest common factor in these terms that I can factor out. Uh, there's no number that every one of these is divisible by. Like 4 and 12, 4 goes into both of those, but not 9. 9 and 12, well, 3 goes into both of those, but not into 4. So there's no G, uh, GCF, so we can't factor that out first, because it'd be nice to do that. Then we're going to label our ABCs. We're going to and ABC refers to these numbers, A to the coefficient of the x squared term, or in this case, i squared. The B goes with the x term, or in this case, the i term. And the C goes with the constant hanging out here by itself. And we're going to use that. We're going to use those ABCs. It's important to put that on here. We're going to use it with this template. Now, I've seen a lot of different ways to do this, but this is just one way that works. And so you might be familiar with another. Then, you know, don't watch the video. Use yours. But if you're familiar with another one and it's not really working well for you, or you want to take another, you know, look at another tool, then this is a pretty good one to do. Um, so we're going to do A times C, or 4 times 9, and we're going to put it up top here. And I like it. Uh, A stands for attic, C for ceiling. Those are both up top. Uh, above, clouds, you know, any kind of way you can remember that A, those go on top. B for basement or below, and that comes from the 12 over here. And uh, now what we're going to do with that is we're going to look for two numbers that multiply to give 36 but add to 12 okay and you may have to list them out 1 36 2 and 18 3 and uh, 12 4 and 9 6 and 6 you're going to look through this list and find things that multiply to 36 but add to 12 and there we got it 6 and 6 and then down here notice my template says ax so we're going to take the a 4 and we're going to put the x there. I really should put an i there for this one, but I've already written the x. 4x, and then we're going to reduce this to 3 over 2x. All I did was 2 went into both of those terms. Here it's the same exact fraction, so it's 3 over 2x. And then, now I'm sorry, that was called the diamond. This thing doesn't really look so much like a diamond, unless you put this part on it. That's how they show it in the textbooks in math. All right, that's called the diamond. And then we're going to binomialize, bion, <laughs> thinking of the bionic man from my time period. Okay, we're going to binomialize. And yes, that is a trademarked word. You will not find that anywhere. I made that one up. And all it is is taking these fractions and turning them into binomials. Watch what I'm doing. 2x plus 3. You just take the denominator and then throw the numerator in the back there, all right, along with its sign. That was not a mathematical thing. That was just a trick. It just works. So that's my answer. However, you notice that it's expressed, well, of course, with the I, but as this, and that's a more precise way to express it or a more efficient way to say it. This last thing, what do you think this would be? Some of you already know it. It's check. Check with foil or other multiplication tools. We're going to multiply this. 2 times 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared, or in this case i squared. The inside you get, uh, and the outside you get 6x, 6x, that's 12x, or 12i. And in the last two terms, 3 times 3, you get the 9. And all I was doing was checking to make sure that it really did multiply back to give me the original trinomial. Next one. All right. Um, now this one, I wanted to put this on as an example because it's not in the right order. I got an x squared term, the constant, and an x term. I really need to rearrange this into 12x squared, the x squared term up front, the x term next, and then the constant. 
Now this one's going to be a little bit tougher, so 12 times 10 gives me 120. I got, uh, okay, we had to label our ABCs, sorry, label our ABCs. I pulled A times C up top. I'm putting the basement down here, and I'm looking for two things that multiply to give 120 and add to give negative 23. Now think about it, if they multiply to give a positive, but they're adding to give a negative, they're both going to have to be negative. And I like to work with the signs a little bit later, but just start putting my factors out. 2 and 60, what, 3 and 40, 4 and 30, 5 goes into it, uh, how many times, 24, uh, 6, 6 and 20, 7 doesn't go into it, 8 goes into it some amount of times, let's see, 10 and 15, okay, and uh, 9 doesn't go into it, 10, and 12 goes, and uh, 11 doesn't go into it. 12, once you get to the same number that you've already used on this side, you can stop, okay? So once you get to that, all right, so, and then it looks like, and some of you are already like, hey, hey, it's there, 8 and 15. So I'm going to put my 8 and 15 here. However, they both have to be negative to make it multiply to a positive, add to the negative. Now we're going to put that AX on the bottom, so we're going back to our A value. And we're going to put uh, 12x and 12x. Then we're going to reduce this, a critical step. Some people forget to do this part. We're going to reduce these fractions. 4 goes into both of those. So 4 goes into 12 3 times. So i got a 3x below. And negative 2 times. Keep that sign. Over here I've got uh, 3 goes into both of these. i got a 4x down here and a 5, a negative 5 on top. Now I'm going to magically binomialize it. 3x minus 2 and binomialize this one. 4x minus 5. I would check it with foil to make sure it works. Boom! It does. Nicely done. 3x minus 2. 4x minus 5. There it is. That was one of the tougher ones. Uh, critical thing was getting it in the right order on that particular one. Looking at the next one. Ooh, big numbers. Is it in the right order? Yeah. Is there a GCF, greatest common factor? No. I have to go straight to this, so I'm going to label my A, B, and C values. Multiply A times C is 60. The B is negative 19. I'm thinking of uh, 15 and 4. Oh, I'm getting good at this. Negative 15 and negative 4. Multiply to 60. Add to negative 19. That may take you a little while, and I would suggest doing a systematic list of the factors. Some people do it this way. Some people do it like this. 1 and 60, 2 and, you know, 30 and so forth until you work down to those middle terms or whatever. Um, so you may need to do it that way. Um, pull this out of here. And, okay, so we got an AX. I keep going back to this one. I need to erase that one. All right, so 20 is my A value, 20 x and then over here 20 x now I'm going to reduce 5 goes into both of these 5 goes into that top that numerator negative 3 times 5 goes in the bottom or the denominator 4 times 4 goes into to both of these so I'm going to reduce that to negative 1 over 5 x hopefully you saw where I'm doing that I'm just reducing that to negative 1 and positive 5 okay 4 went into each one of those now binomialize it 4 x minus 3 5x minus 1. Seen a lot of different ways to do this. Some are just as easy, but this is the one we're highlighting. Now this one's just asking which one is a factor of it. So I just have to find one of these over here. I find that one. I shouldn't find the other one in here. So they're trying to trick me on those. All right. That's good. All right. Have fun with that. That's, uh, you know, a lot of steps in that. Uh, nothing's super complicated, except for maybe factoring when the numbers get big. And um, have fun with that. Get that accelerated math done.